afternoon. I'm Jane Brennan, one of the vice presidents of the League of Women Voters of Central Delaware County. I want to thank you all for joining us for today's Hot Topic program, which is an update on the health department. The mission of the League of Women Voters is to encourage informed and active participation in citizenship, elections, and democracy. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan political organization that encourages informed and active participation in government and influences public policy through education and advocacy. The League neither supports nor opposes any political party or candidate. Before I introduce today's speaker, I'd like to share with you the upcoming events the League is offering. On Monday, April 24th, there's a voter registration effort at Chester East Side from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. On Tuesday, April 25th, there will be a virtual candidate forum for Chester City Council at 7 p.m. via YouTube. You must register for it on our website, lwvcdc.org. On Wednesday, there's another voter registration effort at Chester East Side, again from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And Wednesday is also Lobby Day in Harrisburg. So there will be some representatives from our league going to Harrisburg to meet with our state legislators. On Thursday, there is another virtual candidate forum, this time for Chester City Mayor. And again, it's via YouTube. You have to go to our website, lwvcdc.org to register. And on Saturday, for fun, we're having an afternoon tea and a historic house tour of the Gifford Risley House in Media from 1.30 to 4. Attendance is limited to the first 25 people and we think there is either one or two slots left. So if you're interested, you must go to our webpage, go to events, and then sign up that way. Sorry. Um, then on May 1st at 5 p.m., there's a program called Ballot Box Basics. Um, it's a Zoom presentation by the League of Women Voters of Pennsylvania. That's 5.30 on Monday. And again, you can access it through our website. Um, on May 3rd and 4th, which are Wednesday and Thursday of next week, there's a Pennsylvania School Board Workshop Series for Candidates, which is presented by the Education Policy and Leadership Center, sponsored by the League of Women Voters. So, sorry. Um, trying to shut all of these things down. Um, and on May 9th, the, which is a Tuesday, the International Relations Study Group will have the, a program on Latin American politics. And that program is either in person at Joan Haspin's house or we also Zoom it. So you're all welcome to join. And on May 12th, our next Hot Topics program will be Legal Aspects of Healthcare for Seniors, presented by Jennifer Simon, who is a lawyer with the McAndrews Law Firm. Information about all of these programs can be found at our website, and the registration links are provided on the web page. And now for today, uh, today's program is called Building the Public Health Infrastructure in Delaware County, One Year Later. As many of you know, the League of Women Voters of Central Delaware County has long advocated for a health department in Delaware County. Now that it's a reality, we are eagerly following its progress and functioning. Our guest speaker for today is Dr. Monica Taylor, chairperson of the Delaware County Council. She is also the County Council liaison to the following county departments, intercommunity health, uh, the County Office to, for Services to the Aging, the Medical Examiner, Housing and Community Development, Veterans Affairs, Human Services, and Children and Youth Services, and Library Services. Dr. Taylor is particularly well qualified for these assignments as she is a professor and program director of the Kinesiology Department in the College of Public Health at Temple University. 
Her community outreach has included a project called STEAM in the Philadelphia Elementary Schools. Uh, and this project is to introduce young students to science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. On a personal level, Dr. Taylor has been involved in basketball since she was five years old. She played as an undergraduate for the University of Maine, and she played professionally in Ireland. Dr. Taylor and her husband and three children live in Upper Darby. The questions that have been submitted uh, prior to the event have been shared with Dr. Taylor, and I will moderate those questions. And Nancy Schartz Hako will follow any questions that you might want to add on the chat function. So, with no further ado, welcome Dr. Taylor. Thank you, everyone, and thank you for having me today. I am going to share my screen. So, All right. Well, thank you for that uh, introduction. And let's uh, kind of look at uh, Delaware County Health Department and where we kind of came from to get here and <laughs> where we're going and what has happened over the first year. So as a review, uh, when we're looking at our vision, mission, and values. Uh, remember Delaware County, all members of Delaware County community have access to the resources that provide the opportunity to lead a healthy and productive life. And, you know, that's something that we really, our, our goal, that is our overall goal. And that's really our, our, our vision for the county government as a whole and how we can connect. Uh, and looking at the values, equity was one of, is one of our top key pieces and then collaboration uh, and leadership, accountability, innovation, stewardship, all of these are um, values that are embedded into our health department. Just as a little review slide, um, we, the advocacy here, it's been more than 15 years. And I know some of you have been working on this project for decades. So thank you for your advocacy for uh, working on policy change, working on grassroots efforts to really get us to this point. Uh, there was a steering committee that was put together. Um, and even before that, some of you were on our, our transition teams when we, were, when we uh, won our election in 2019 to start this project. Um, and from that, we created steering uh, committees that went forward to meet with the state starting in January of 2020 to really create this uh, our health department. Uh, in that process, we were looking, we were committed to the Health 3.0 model and that framework, really thinking about how we can come in, understanding that Delaware County is resource rich and we have a lot of entities who have been doing some of the work that a health department would have been doing all along. And how do we come in and be that chief health strategist and help them connect and help them expand while also implementing our health department to fill those gaps and those needs that we know are there. So we, we had several listening sessions. I think it was over 50 listening sessions with a variety of groups. The League of Women Voters, our, um, our NAACP branches, all of our colleges and universities, our public schools, our private schools, our parochial schools, our uh, providers. We really tried to get as many people to the table to hear where they saw the need from their individual perspective for what could happen in our health department and where we could come in. Uh, alignment with the PA Department of Health, the accreditation standards, uh, health equity focus, even when we're thinking about how we build it, how we build our programs, how we go about hiring for our health department, and early training considerations, and an emphasis on local data, something that we have not had before because we haven't had a health department, uh, and a health in all policy. So while we have a health department and they're, they're going forward with our mission, it's really a health in all policies at the county level too for all of what we are putting. You know, it's, it's in housing, it's in our uh, community development, it's in economic development, it's in planning and thinking about it from a health in all policies perspective because we know that that helps to improve the health and well-being of our residents. Um, Looking at the COVID pandemic uh, really exposed some of our gaps that we had in the communities in which we weren't reaching. 
uh, whether it was with our health department and our non-existent health department, Chester County, um, and in uh, in so many other services, and our PADOH foundational public health services. So we started, and when I met with you all last year, right when we were about to launch, essentially. Um, we really have focused on the first year in thinking about what are those foundational public health services that are required of us from the state and the federal funding that we receive, uh, that administration, the environmental health, the community health services, including epidemiological support, and looking at that Act 315 and Act 12, which govern how we get our funding, right? How we became eligible, how we were a, uh, eligible by the state in order to get those funding streams. And they're really focused on building those programs and making them as efficient as possible. And of course, a strong desire to be a modernized public health department. And so thinking about how, what is the next step? You know, we're trying to build that foundation, make sure we're hitting those marks for what are, we're required by the state, but also what are the other areas that are specific to Delaware County and how do we move forward in that health and all policies uh, health and all policies mentality. And so we have we have so many partners who have helped us to get to this point, right? It's not just the county, it is the League of Women Voters. It's all those providers who are out there who are helping us to move forward with the vision of providing better services for the county and meeting those public health goals. We also have our Board of Health was dedicated to health equity in the county, and they were appointed last year, over a year ago. Um, our leadership is committed to that Health 3.0, being that chief health strategist, and also thinking about how we build the health department, right? It's a, the goal is for us to be able to be as accessible as possible. And for people not necessarily have to come to us. So we don't have a giant brick and mortar building in the middle of the county. We have our satellite uh, smaller office in uh, Yaden. We also have a clinic space that we've just recently opened that's in Chester. Uh, we're building a space in media. So trying to make it so that people can get to us. And then if they can't, how can we come out and support them where they are? And how do we do that? It's all part of that 3.0 model. So infrastructure, uh, infrastructure, our county offices, our human resources, uh, looking at how we really link the health department with all of those county resources. That's what we've been working on through the last year. Uh, you know, we none of our departments knew what it would be like to have a health department and where, where the synergies exist and how to best support the health department's mission uh, and through all of our internal county offices. Staffing, rapid hiring and onboarding. <laughs> you know, we went through a phase where we really started hiring for the health department in fall of 21 to have the base of, of employees that we needed to start it, but then still working through the, the last year to build more uh, staff policies, procedures, and to bring onboard individuals. Emergency response and crisis environment, continuing to work through that uh, with our population health division, professional development, uh, leverage training and experience, and then funds, utilizing our uh, American Rescue Plan Act funds, uh, our county contribution to the budget to help our health department stabilize and also go after the additional funding streams that we have seen that are out there. And even more so now, when we originally did our, our, um, our budget analysis, we were working on what had been available for public health over the last five years. And before the pandemic and coming out of it, you know, it's it's a good thing coming out of the pandemic, uh, it, the powers that be the, the federal government, the state government have realized that we were not putting enough into public health over the last several decades, right? We had been gradually removing, moving funds out of this area. We're starting to see more funds coming in, more grant opportunities from the CDC that our health department can go after. And we have been going after those funds and have been successful to do so. Uh, partner support, so county, council uh, support, 
uh, municipalities really working with our municipalities. And there's 49 of them and they are all unique in their own way and working with those municipalities to figure out how do they, how can we best support them? Uh, whether it's through our environmental health and uh, looking at how we're doing our restaurant inspections, but also how can we support them in training and helping them for the emergency response and crisis response. Um, and helping to support their public health needs in the county. Residents, you know, we try to we try to bring people in as much as possible and have our residents involved. Um, we have open houses on a, on a regular schedule at both our Yaden um, Clinic and our Chester Clinic office. Uh, bringing in the private sector and entities to help us move specific programs forward, to help bring in funding into the health department, to also help us provide more services, right? Because there are so many providers that are out there that are providing services, and maybe we're just there to help them write a grant or expand their access, expand their services. Uh, and then, of course, academia. How can we collaborate? We have uh, a wealth of uh, resources in terms of our universities and colleges that are in our county, but are, are in the Southeast region, who have public health majors, who have social work majors, who have um, all of these different groups that we can utilize to help for workforce development, bringing people into the county to move into the health department. And so how can we work with them to provide more for our community? All right, so just as a review to kind of go through some of what we talked about last year in terms of the benchmarks we set, uh, our Office of Health Equity, uh, a large portion of this first year benchmarks were, you know, performance measures to assess effectiveness of our health equity uh, efforts and to build on those program policies and procedures. Our Bureau of Administrative Support is really that bureau that covers our finance, our grant management, our procurement, our human resources, uh, grant writing, uh, all of those pieces of the puzzle. And for 2022, we goal, you're going to see this as a common theme, finalize those policies and procedures, uh, finalize recruitment process and uh, designed to ensure inclusivity, uh, finalize robust onboarding process. So what works best for us? How can we onboard individuals so that, you know, they're part of a certain division, but how can we on, onboard our environmental health team to be specific for environmental health, but also to understand the holistic picture of what the, the group that they're joining in terms of the whole health department, and then the county mission. How do we onboard folks for all of those different layers and levels? and finalized uh, position description uh, for grant writer. Personal health. Uh, so personal health is our, is our division that is going to be working with our communicable disease control, our vaccines for children program, our school health liaisons. Uh, benchmarks, of course, are continuing to those policies and procedures. Establish those relationships. So establishing relationships with all of our school districts, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about what has happened over the last year, uh, establish uh, mechanisms to incorporate authentic community voice. So we want to make sure, while there was a clear mechanism as we were building the health department to have community voice through all of those listening sessions, uh, through the um, think tank groups and so on and so forth, how do we keep that in? How do we continue to get the community involved and a voice from those who were serving in the programs as we're developing those programs. Population health is really focused on our continued response, pandemic response, moving into that emergency preparedness and keeping us ready and available for any sorts of emergencies that might um, occur in Delaware County. Disease and health surveillance, uh, health promotion and wellness, and then the benchmarks, of course, were finalized their procedures and policies and procedures, data collection. Uh, we have started the process, and I know some of you are part of some of the focus groups for, their, for this, of our community health needs assessment. We have never had one because we haven't had a health department, so we've been using more regional data uh, and the community assessments that are done by our hospital systems. 
uh, but we are actually undergoing the process of doing that needs assessment on our own. Establishing mechanisms to engage our community members in identifying priorities and concerns. So once again, as you, it's a common theme. We're trying to engage the community as much as possible and keep them at the table as we build this. Environmental health, inspections, vector control, all fall underneath um, our environmental health. And benchmarks continuing to do their policies and procedures and inspection process. You know, benchmark, they've, as soon as we were official, our environmental health had to take on the role of doing inspections for our county. Now, first year. So as you can see here in the first year, these are some of the key services that we have been able to implement and begin and move forward with uh, throughout each and every one of our divisions. And we will get into each division specifically, but these are just, just kind of an overlay of every program that we've been able to put in place in the first year. All right, so first our administration, Administrative support, establishing and maintaining a fiscal plan, ensuring fiscal responsibility, uh, providing a regular flow of communication between our health department and all of those divisions within the county government that we need to coordinate and collaborate with, and implementing policies, looking for best practices amongst other health departments, and really starting to move forward in that grant space, going out for those additional grants that aren't necessarily a a part of Act 315 or Act 12, but that are evergreen, some somewhat evergreen uh, grant funding that's out there. Administering over uh, $6.5 million in grant awards in this current fiscal year. Now, personal health. So as we talked a little bit about before, personal health operates at two different divisions. So we have two different clinic spaces, uh, our Yaden facility, which was our initial site. And now we also have a site in the city of Chester to provide supports and services. Uh, personal health team, has an, we are doing sexual health clinics, tuberculosis screenings, evaluations, treatments, our vaccine for children program, and so much more. As you see here, we have locations that are open on a regular basis. Uh, each week, we host immunization clinics, and we also help to partner with our schools to pro provide immunizations within the school districts. Uh, once again, the piece of trying to meet individuals where they are. Epidemiology, a big piece of epidemiology is really designed and implementing the operational plan for our first countywide community health assessment, uh, which is an important assessment for us to do so we can really get a data-driven look at where our community is, where our needs are in terms of public health, and then how we implement procedures, policies, programs going forward to help to meet those needs that come out of that assessment. Population health. Uh, our population health is really working on that public health preparedness program. Uh, their goal is to collaborate with as many partners as possible and to work with all of those uh, individuals, those small groups, large groups, volunteers, nonprofits, academics, and to partner with them and collaborate with them to meet the public health needs of our community. Uh, one of the big projects that we were able to launch this year uh, you know, talking with our school districts during the pandemic and just in general, we all know that our school districts in Delaware County are underfunded. All of them are underfunded at uh, some level. And one of the areas is really our, their nurses. And some school districts have one nurse who might rotate around three or four different buildings. <laughs> um, and uh, in what they were doing, we were, they were utilizing the nurses as almost contact tracers. And they had to be the ones who were the point person for COVID in every single building. And uh, imagine the, the level of uh, stress and just so much that was put on our school nurses over the last year, including our school districts. But one of the programs we were, supposed to, we were able to move forward with was sponsoring part-time contract nurses 
in our school districts. And so we were able to partner with 10 of our school districts uh, to sponsor them to have a nurse that's available and in their school district where they chose to put them at in whatever buildings, it was up to them. And we just sponsored and, and covered the cost through one of our grants. And so they could support them for preparedness, relationship building, support communicable disease response, all of the other, uh, and reporting of which they were doing on their own essentially prior to this. Uh, population health, we also have our uh, our wellness line, which is which goes as a part of our population health. And those of you who are familiar with it, it is the line that we started during COVID uh, to try to answer, to try to get people in the line for vaccines or whatever it might be. And we've really transitioned this to a wellness line. So people can call in for any questions that they have. And it's really a part of that no wrong door policy that we're trying to move forward with as a county. And the wellness line can even help to answer calls that are maybe human services related and make sure they're getting those individuals to the location or the entity that they need to be um, with in order to provide the support that they need. As you can see, we get quite a bit of uh, traffic on our, on our wellness line. Uh, in September was our highest month, looking at um, over a thousand calls that came in to our wellness line, and this is a 24 seven line that's available to anyone in Delaware County. Environmental health. A big piece about environmental health right now is working on those inspections. Uh, and as you see, as of February, we have been able to inspect almost 3000 facilities in Delaware County. Uh, and those facilities are our restaurants, our commercial kitchens, our, our school kitchens, and so on and so forth. And so really been able to get out there, environmental health team, and hit the ground running to get those inspections done. So some of our activities that we're moving forward with for 2023, of course, our mastery of all those foundational public health services in all of our divisions. So getting back to that, want to become you know, effective and efficient at all those services that are required of us of Act 315 and Act 12 uh, that allow us to get the funding that we're getting from the state. But then looking at how do we move out of that into the next, the next step, the next level. Uh, staff time and activity automation, workforce development with focused trainings uh, for public health, involvement and formation of a maternal child health coalition, which I'll talk a little bit about uh, later on, uh, prevention strategies for leader, leadership for opioid harm reduction initiatives, looking at the opioid settlement dollars that are coming in. Our health department is a key piece along with our human services of how we really utilize those dollars to enhance the programming that we have and then to move and bring new programming into the county. And how do we do that to effectively to serve the needs? We're developing our strategic plan uh, and effectively manage nearly ten million dollars in grants that we will that we will have going into the next fiscal year. Some of you may remember this slide from last year as a uh, just to go through kind of the phases or at least how we've tried to phase out what we're doing with our health department. This first phase that we're in right now is really ensure that all programs required by Act 315 and Act 12 are up, running, running smoothly and effectively. Uh, collect and analyze data. So we're in that phase right now. We're doing that health assessment. Uh, establish and maintain those partnerships. So we're kind of in this phase one and starting to move into that phase two, which is 23 to 26, expanding capacity. Uh, so that we can meet the priority needs that are not addressed by Act 315. Remember, Act 315 is a little antiquated, right? They haven't they haven't done an update to Act 315 since I think 1962. It might have been, <laughs> and so we know that public health has changed so much since then, and there's so much more that we can address and that we can move forward with with our health department. So really looking at where is that capacity, where do we build that capacity, and what are the programs that are specific to us. And then moving into phase three is undertake that accreditation process, moving towards becoming a nationally accredited health department. 
And so this kind of builds it more into the phases with programs and thinking about it in a program perspective. Right now, we're working on personal health and our immunizations, our maternal and child health programs, our communicable disease control, uh, population health, looking at our pandemic emergency response, our disease surveillance, our health education, environmental health, those food inspections, getting out the door of food inspections, food, water, sewage, pools and all of everything that uh, falls under that act. And then looking at that phase two, case manage management resources, expanded infant mortality programs, uh, violence prevention, uh, housing security, food security. We're really starting to move into that space as a county and our health department is also a big, a key factor to how we do that. Thinking about that health and all policies idea, environmental justice, air quality, lead poisoning prevention are all areas that we already know, even without the data. These are areas we know are a concern in Delaware County that we are looking at how we can move programming forward and expand our capacity to do so. And then looking at future programs in Delaware County, just to build on that last so slide, that health and all policies, how we link our health department with our new centralized food bank. And how do we help to link all of those um, grant funded entities essentially into a centralized way so that we can you know, meet the needs. We know that if somebody is experiencing food insecurity, they might also be experiencing housing insecurity. And how do we get them the supports that they need? And they may also need uh, some supports from our health department. So linking all of those pieces together. Uh, gun violence, environmental justice. Uh, we just initiated both a maternal child health task force and working group, along with a housing task force coalition. Uh, our maternal child health task force is led by our health department. Uh, the goal here is to really look at those uh, maternal morbidity and mortality rates in Delaware County, the disparities that exist there, and how we can implement programs to help provide more resources and more services to our community and try to help to meet the needs and meet those individuals who need the services the most. Uh, we have, we were great, very grateful to be funded from Senator Casey's office for a doula pilot program and community health and perinatal community worker program uh, to help to build more of the infrastructure and the workforce to go out and work in, um, in Delaware County in that maternal space. Uh, one of, you know, as you all know, being Delaware County residents, we are we are essentially now on the eastern border of the county, a maternity desert uh, where Delaware County Memorial Hospital has shut down. They shut down a mature maternity ward over a year ago. Uh, the hospital is temporarily closed right now. Uh, Trinity uh, Mercy Fitz does not have a maternity ward. And so in individuals who live on the eastern side of Delaware County either are going to Chester Crozier, Riddle, or they have to go to Lankinaw. And so those are the closest touch points for uh, them to deliver and thinking about how can we help in that space and how can we provide more support in those areas. Hello Baby has actually, and we're talking about this in the Maternal Child Health Working Group right now. Uh, Hello Baby is a program that's an evidence-based program that we have a version of it in Allegheny County and also Philadelphia County. And it's a way for us to have a touch point on an individual. It does not start until someone, essentially someone who has a baby. And as soon as they have a baby in Delaware County or not in Delaware County, but are a Delaware County resident who has a baby that we are meeting, we are setting up times for them. We are giving them resources, whether that's lactation support, whether that's support for how do you find childcare? What are the resources that are available to you? All of these pieces. And it's for any resident in Delaware County. Um, but we've actually evolved uh, to trying to figure out how do we get people into the system before they have the baby. So how can we support them while during pregnancy and, and forward? And then what does that look like? It's not just hello baby, but how do we support that family going forward through the child's life, right? Because if the goal in our mission is to build healthy families and for residents to be able to live a healthy and happy life in Delaware County, we want this program to be able to help provide support. So whether that's uh, touching base with them at three months of the baby, did you, you have a primary care physician? Do you need help finding one? 
uh, where, that, where do you have the child in daycare? Or do you need help finding that? Year one, where are we at? Year three, where are you at? Year five, do you need help registering your child for school? All of those pieces of the puzzle that help individuals and families to succeed and prosper. Uh, also looking at child vaccinations and continue to move that program forward and lead poisoning and prevention uh, programs and services. And how do we connect our Office of Housing and Community Development where we do lead abatement? And how do we identify children who might be in houses that have lead paint sooner rather than later? Um, sometimes we, we don't get them until later and the goal for the health department is really to prevent lead poisoning. So how do we get more information out? How do we create policies and procedures that help our municipalities to identify those homes that may be susceptible or may have lead uh, paint in them so that we can go in and get the resources and to abate, um, to abate, to lead abatement. This is our team, our, um, our current team. As I said, we are continuing to expand the group and adding on more individuals and onboarding uh, every day. All right, with that, I will thank you all. With that, I will stop sharing my screen and all right. Thank you. That My mind is spinning. I can't believe how much uh, has been accomplished in one year. You know, I know there's much more to go. Some of the questions, one of the questions we got about um, for this program was, how will the closing of Delaware County Memorial Hospital in Upper Darby affect, mental, me, affect medical and mental health care in the county? Yes, uh, you know, uh, from a public health perspective, we are always concerned when health systems close or limit access to services for our communities. Uh, public health is not in the business of speculating what will or could happen uh, based upon the closures. However, we know, uh, given a variety of data points, just what, what can happen and how, and you know, it's up to us to try to figure out, okay, this system is currently, or not the system, but a, a, the hospital is currently closed. And what is the impact going to be on maternal morbidity and mortality, on overall morbidity and mortality, and, and not having that access point right there and trying to move forward with uh, connecting community partners and thinking about how we do long-term planning uh, to with this in mind, essentially. Um, and is do you have any later, any recent information on um, how the Delaware County Memorial Hospital building will be used? No, I mean, currently they're still in litigation uh, with the, the state and the foundation for Delaware County. Um, the goal is to get the hospital to be opened again. Um, and so that is that is the ultimate goal to have those services back where they are. Okay, and um, are we considered to be a post-pandemic health department? Do, how does county public health department maintain readiness for such catastrophic public health events? Well, so public health doesn't really refer to it as a post-pandemic. At some point, COVID-19 will officially be referred to as a endemic. Uh, and the U.S. has a chance to move COVID-19 from being a pandemic to an endemic, uh, which really means that the disease is still around, but that it's at a level that it's not causing a significant disruption in our daily lives. Uh, and endemic diseases can be at high levels. They can be at lower levels. And we have an opportunity to actually get that to a lower manageable level. Essentially, we are there. We just, it just hasn't been officially um, <laughs> noticed yet as the, as the U.S. turning it to an endemic. Uh, it is accomplished, of course, through testing, treatment, community acquired immunity, vaccinations, isolation, and quarantining. Um, we are able to normalize the response to infection and treatment and prevention. And so we're, you know, we're all living with COVID right now, right? It's not <laughs> It's, it's, it's not quite, it's not at the level where it was before because we can manage it. We all have tools. We know better what we're dealing with and how to do so. And, and people have information to go forward with. 
Wow. Um, what are the biggest public health challenges in the city of Chester? You know, the, the, the disinvestment in the community, uh, infrastructure, structural and institutional racism and unstable governing body are some of the underlying root causes of the health disparities and the inequities that exist in Chester um, and that they might be experiencing. Uh, the community health assessment is scheduled uh, to be complete at the end of 2023, and it should give us a better direct idea of uh, and data on the inequities that exist in Chester and other areas of Delaware County. And so really for us, it's, it's really helpful to get that data so that we can move forward and really pinpoint on those programs that are going to help us address those inequities. You know, according to the 2022 uh, uh, health needs assessment that was done by our hospital systems, some of the leading causes of death in Chester and the I-95 corridor are heart disease, cancer, COVID, chronic lower respiratory diseases, and cerebral vascular disease. And so those are some of the top ones that came out of the hospital health assessment. All righty, thank you. And does the county have a long-term housing plan for seriously mentally ill people who are released from emergency hospitals or prisons? Yes, we do. Well, no, no, we do not yet, but we are working on that. So one of the task force that I mentioned, and actually the coalition that I just came from, uh, we started at the same time we started the, the women, the maternal um, health and child health working group in January, we brought together as many stakeholders that we could find who were in the housing space in Delaware County and working at the state level, the Southeast level, wherever it might be. Um, and so the housing task force has about 84 uh, individuals on it. Uh, we have broken it into three different areas, looking at the unhoused population. And this population that you're talking about here for this question, a lot intersect with that population a lot in terms of the, those who are suffering from mental illness, also those who are coming out of our prison. Uh, we've broken it down into the unhoused group, our rapid rehousing, our steady, steady rental uh, piece, and then our home ownership. How do we become, how do we get these individuals across the entire continuum uh, to become homeowners? And then also for those who are in their homes, how do we help them maintain their homes? Whether there are seniors, whether there are low-income families, what are the supports that we can provide to help them to stay in their home that they own? And so the task force is broken into these three subdivisions. I was at the meeting today, that was our rental, it was the middle, the middle piece, um, and what are the policies and procedures and the barriers that exist there. And the unhoused group, I lead that group along with uh, Sandy Garrison uh, from our human services and community supports. Uh, and what, what are the barriers? So right now we're actually going through an entire survey and I'll have to send you all the link because we're looking for community input besides just stakeholders. We want community input on our, on our housing uh, infrastructure right now. Uh, so one of the pieces from the unhoused group, we brought in a, a um, consultant to do a assessment of our entire unhoused, uh, our unhoused uh, infrastructure and where we have, uh, where we have shelters, what's the next level, how quickly individuals come into the shelter, are assessed and then move through the continuum, so on and so forth. And so we have them doing that assessment right now um, with the goal to be able to give us information. You know, I'm a professor, I'm a researcher, I like data. <laughs> um, so I, I like us to assess the, the situation so that we can make data-driven choices um, and move forward with those. And so that's, that's really where we are with that working group. Um, and the goal is really for us to have out of all three of those groups, those subgroups, those subcommittees, is for us to have um, actionable items. And maybe they're short-term, mid-term, long-term. might be five years before we have more um, workforce housing in the county or whatever it might be that comes out of it. But for us to have three tangible goals from each of those groups and ways in which we can accomplish those goals in front of council by the end of this year. So that that's, the, is that's the goal out of that group. Big task. Housing is a big is a big issue in the county and all of course across the country. But we are trying to take it on and see what we can actually do to improve it. My goodness, how busy you have been, <laughs> um, Nancy. Are there any 
questions on the chat? Yes, there are. Uh, one is very cut and dried, I think. How many employees do you have in the health department? Uh, right now, I want to say we are at 82 or so. And we have, so originally we started with 62 and then quickly realized that that was not going to meet the need and that we needed to expand. And we've had, we had that in the plan for the phases, but just looking at the need and how much we've had to so support and where people are, uh, individuals are coming from. We are in the new fiscal plan, or at least last year's fiscal calendar, we have 110 positions, FTEs. Wow. Thank you. You guys have been busy onboarding. Uh, yes. <laughs> another, yeah. Uh, 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 somebody's interested in the status of the lawsuits filed by several municipalities to prevent the county from doing the environmental inspections. Yes. Uh, I, it, well, right now there, they were, they saw, we still have an injunction. So we are not providing uh, inspections in those municipalities. And we are working through the legal steps in order to, in order to gain that ability in those municipalities. I, it is seven municipalities, I believe that are left mm -hmm. um, out of our 49. I am so working, working our way through that. I, and if you look at the the, the history of Montgomery, and that was a while ago, it was 1989 when Montgomery County started their health department. They went through a, a similar phase and by year four or five, all of the municipalities were under the, under the wing of the health department, the county health department. So I think it'll work itself out, but we are going through all of the legal steps to do so. Right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, what is the health department able to do to support improved mental health care for all, particularly those who are not, who lack insurance? Yes. Well, so the health department doesn't necessarily work as much in the mental health space. A lot of that comes from our, um, our human services department, but we've tried to break down as many silos as possible within the county government so that there's much more collaboration and coordination amongst our divisions. Um, you know, as our Look, just looking at the opioid settlement dollars, the task force we've created to help us figure out how we should be spending the funds um, is headed by our health, our health department and our human services department, right? Uh, same thing with the mental health space. We've been actively trying to bring in more providers into Delaware County and supporting them through ARPA dollars or block grant dollars to help start up funds to, to try and expand the services. It really was was spurred last summer by Cro Prospect Crozier's threat to close down all of their behavioral health and substance use uh, supports that they were providing for the county. And um, that really pushed us to be active and aggressive about trying to bring in more providers into the space. Because the more providers that we have, the, the, the more resources we have for our community. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, can you comment on the risk of Crozier closing um you know i they're in litigation right now for delaware county memorial hospital and you know i we are here to support them and support the system itself because it's so critical to our community um and you know hoping for the best and continue to support them through this process and trying to transition and whatever ends up being what is the, going to be, what's the new closure. Yeah, okay, thank you. I don't have any more questions, Jane. Thank you, Monica. Okay, well then that kind of concludes our program. Monica, thank you so much. I just can't believe the amount of information that you have provided us. My head is spinning. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, and certainly as a longtime champion of the health department for Delaware County, we as the league are extremely pleased to see such a plethora of achievements. Um, I would just also like to remind everyone else that um, all of our upcoming activities that I mentioned at the very beginning can be found on our webpage, lwvcdc.org and click on events. Um, and we hope you will join us for as many of them as you can. If you are a member of the League of Women Voters, we thank you for your support. And if you're not a member, we would like you to join us. Thank you so much. And again, Monica, thank you so very much. 
Thank you for having me. <laughs>